Foley has lived in England her whole life, but she still retains an unmistakably Irish lilt. I don't really talk to like English people. It's more everyone bees Irish that I talk to, so there's like no way that I'd lose the way like I wouldn't turn English or anything like that. Like, I'd never lose my accent. Lully is currently planning a lavish wedding to fellow Irish traveller Martin. Having grown up in a house, once wed, she will make this small caravan her marital home. It's different to a house over everything being on top of each other. Where's the kitchen you turn around? Now you're in the living room. <laughs> Look to your left, you're in the bedroom. <laughs> but although she's looking forward to her spectacular wedding day, a shadow hangs over the preparations. Lully's father, Jimmy, passed away when she was just nine. He was buried seven years ago today, on St Patrick's Day. That's the biggest thing for your daddy to give you away. It would have been like a lot better if daddy was there to give me away and everything like that, but I can't. I'm dead seven years, so it goes down to the grave every St Patrick's Day every year. Like, over daddy's anniversary, everyone says I'm the image of him. I know it sounds weird, like, it sounds like, look, I look like a man, <laughs> but I'm like a girl version. <laughs> the family have travelled to her father's grave on St Patrick's Day ever since he passed away, but in her wedding year, Jimmy will be particularly missed. Can you hurry up, cos it's freezing? I'm not putting out a bunch of flowers now. Time where we come down to our respect, really. It's just important to us because of him being our daddy. Go down on St. Patrick's Day and get a bunch of flowers or something, put it on the grave, just show their respects that they were there. And now you put a Budweiser down as a favourite drink can. Mommy smokes a bag with him. Puts a bag in his little side and then she smokes a bag along with him. Although there are differences beginning to emerge between Irish travellers in England and those in Ireland, both groups remain united by a determination to preserve their culture and to celebrate life's big landmarks. With just five days to go until her extravagant wedding, 16-year-old Irish traveller Lully is doing some last-minute shopping with fiancé Martin picking out her ring, and the perfect footwear to match her spectacular dress. White ones. <laughs> and what are they for? Um, wedding day. <laughs> and I've got nice shoes on. Why, why are you going to wear training? Because I want comfort. And I'm too small. My arm's too small. <laughs> what are you going to do with them? Put little diamonds on them, and the ribbons and the lace ends. Lully is equally keen for her new marital home to have the requisite sparkle. And she's adding the final touches to her caravan before she moves in with Martin after the wedding. But the stress of organising the big day means her voice is fading fast. I think I'm getting tons of ideas. <laughs> I think I'm losing my voice. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> Saying, do this, do that. I think I've done everything. Look, every sweets, drink every different bottle of water. I don't stop drinking water because it's saying you're dehydrated. There's no way in this world I'm dehydrated. <laughs> I can stop from this. <coughs> Lully has been dating her fiance on and off for the last three years. These are the first pictures we took together. Them once. The couple met during a screening of Shrek 4 at the local cinema. When I was about 13, went up to the pictures with him, and I uh, didn't think he grabbed me. He grabbed me at the end of the film. Um, I can hear we were watching Shrek for, for after. <laughs> and uh, we went up there. He grabbed me anyway. Never kissed him that time. Never kissed him a while after that, before that. Then, 
Then I started talking to him on the phone. And then uh, he grabbed me again and kissed him. And called him since. It's about five months ago, was it? About five months ago. With three days to go till her wedding day, Irish traveller Lully and her sister Lisa Marie are doing some last-minute preparations at a local nail salon. But with the stress of planning a traveller wedding beginning to get to her, the 16-year-old has been struggling with her voice. It's getting better, a little bit. She can have a sentence now because I rang her the other day ago and I, I got the worst fright. And she's probably going to need a microphone or something to say her eyes. <laughs> While the vows may prove a problem on the big day, like many traveller brides, for Lully, looking good is more important than sounding good. It smells so happening. <laughs> it really is. Because it's the pictures you look back on and everything is it's a memory. What do you want people to say? Oh, look at her, she's the best looking bride. <laughs> <laughs> Although Lully is an Irish traveller who abides by strict Irish traveller traditions, Living within a resolutely Irish community and speaking with a strong Irish accent, she knows almost nothing about Ireland. Why do you think there are so many Irish travellers that choose to live in the UK rather than Ireland? I don't have a clue. I really don't. I don't know. They probably got fed up of us. Is the lifestyle different here, do you think? I don't know. I can't really say because I've never been to Ireland. Lully has been joined at the nail salon by the rest of the wedding party, which consists of 11 bridesmaids, all of whom will be decked out in matching tailor-made blue dresses come the big day. A big blue dress. Uh, a big sticky out dress. Lily, are you excited? <laughs> <laughs> Not excited, no. Even that's the boy too. No! No! These are the lilies for, for dance dress. Are these for the top or the skirt? Dressmaker Thelma Medine is one of the few people with first-hand experience of travellers both in England and in Ireland. And she's currently working on a stunning dress for a 20-year-old bride from Wexford in Ireland. This here is the underskirts for a girl called Nan. Uh, Nan Connors, who comes from Ireland. She wants it big. She wants her dress big. And it's going to be between 14 and 15 stone when we finished. What you'll find with the, with the Irish travellers who come from Ireland, um, they'll come in and say, we don't want it as blingy or we don't want it as big, but eventually it ends up more blingy and bigger. Where over here, they're not worried about what you think, what they want. They will come in and go, I want it the biggest ever, I want the most on it. And, you know, they're not backward and coming forward and telling you what they want. I mean, we have a policy here where we say, if we think it looks fantastic, then double what you've put on it, and it's about race. These are trying times for travelling families in Ireland. Unemployment in the community stands at over 80%, but extravagant weddings are often viewed as one of life's necessities, and Thelma isn't short of orders. But I haven't found uh, a downturn in the amount of people who come to me. I haven't found a downturn in the amount they're prepared to pay. I mean, you, you know, they are survivors. They've been like that from day one. Probably we would put a wedding off because of, you know, the times are bad. They won't, basically they can't. You know, they, they need that girl to get married when, as soon as possible. Bride-to-be Nan has the pale skin common to many Irish travellers, but in the build-up to her wedding day, she's been working hard to perfect the suntan traveller look. You just keep your hands up and your head up. Just we'll move do your head forward a bit, that's it. All the girls want to look brown on the, on the wedding day, obviously. They don't want to look pale and insipid against the white. So they all use the false tan, different ones. 
and we found the best method of stopping the tan going onto the dresses is they spray themselves with like a hair locker and it just keeps it in place, stops it rubbing off. Does it seem real now? Yeah. I know, you must feel like you're in a dream. Oh, it's Nana. really a sun. Oh, Nana, it's when I was giving, looks lovely. Oh, let's just hold on to you. Okay. Oh, oh that's Nana, it's really a sun. Oh, oh, Nana, it's when I was giving, looks so sun. Oh, it's lovely. Every single one of you know how to pose, don't you? You all know how to work the camera. <laughs> <laughs> In her fairy tale dress, Nan Connors and her bridesmaids are ready to leave for the church. But in this part of Ireland, it rains for over 150 days every year, and today shall be no exception. <laughs> I am really worried about the dress and the weather now. It's absolutely torrential. We're going to get soaked. Today, we could definitely do a pair of ways. <laughs> Can you feel it? Hey. Right, it's just, it's just keep held to that bar. She's what? You've got over to the back. Like, yeah, go round that way. Yeah. Put your skirts in front of the front of your skirts. At a gown that weighs over 14 stone, Nan's Irish eyes aren't smiling. Just wait for a minute now. Smile, oh, smile, smile, smile. Stand still, stand still. Just keep smiling. No, she wants to get in, she's freezing. That's it. But just like an Irish traveller wedding in England, it's not just the bridal party who've dressed for the occasion. A lot of unusual outfits in there. Or if you go to a lot of weddings and, you know, if you just go dressed ordinary, then you're never going to stand out, especially the young girls who want to get married and that they're going to have to make a bigger effort than most. So I think they all try and do something that's completely different. In London, Another Irish traveller is preparing to see her extravagant white dress for the first time. Luli's wedding to Martin is now just two days away. Hey, my dress. It's all like you. See the back? Oh, the back is lovely. Oh, it's fell out. With her father having passed away seven years ago, her mum, older sisters and uncles have all chipped in to make sure she has the perfect fairy tale wedding. Lily, how do you feel? Excited. But when it comes to the payment, the emotion of the moment is quickly shattered. Deposit, no, no. Deposit, and well, then the they have to add another... I paid you £500 in an envelope. We, we pay. No, no. Luli's family claim they have already paid for the garments in full. The dressmaker believes she's only received a deposit. No, 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 you know she gave you that money. Like, why are you lying? She's getting married, why would she lie? She won't give me any justice, she's saying that we never paid. But she did on my weddings in two days. Same, we never paid nothing. And you can't get a dress in two days. Especially with being so many. The argument escalates, and soon the police arrive. She's wasting everybody out of their money. It's not even the point about the money to get married in two days. I will get them. Honest to God, I will get them. I need them, sure. I can't do nothing without them. Eventually, a compromise is reached. 
Lily will be given her wedding dress and one gown for her chief bridesmaid. Her other ten bridesmaids will have to go without. I have no bridesmaids at all. Nice to think for the photos and things to look back on. Now I haven't got any. The night before the wedding, and the 16-year-old and her bridal party have gathered at a nearby hotel in Huntingdon. I can't put up any more, he's made a bow. But having spent months preparing for the big day, the problems with the dress have cast a sour note over the proceedings. Oh, my life, Luke, I've just... Bend over, Lisa Marie, I'm trying to do this. There's a ribbon this big that you're whole back with. The front of that skirt is horrible. No, it's really disgraceful. The diamonds are coming off already. It's not nice enough. Put more diamonds on there. Don't like it. Don't like the front of it. Yeah, what can you do? Nothing. When does it come off? So I'm going to have to do with this. I'm stupid when I have to hold the ball. Now ten bridesmaids down, Lully must find other ways to add sparkle to her big day. And no one is too young to be given the signature Irish traveller makeover. She's a eyebrows anyway. Torture the children. Who's next? <laughs> Let me see, let me see, me girl. Last, last, last. Let me see. Show the camera, look. <laughs> it's the day of Irish traveller Lully's wedding. Yeah, it's perfect. Like that, yeah? Yeah. And at just 9 a.m., the beautification process has already begun. You look far too young to get married. You look so young. 16. How important is it to look good today? It's very important. <laughs> Biggest day of a uh, girl's life, get married. See me getting sick outside the chapel <laughs> with nerves. It all hit me at once. With the argument with her dressmaker still unresolved, Lully's flower girls have been bought off the peg dresses from a local shop. Now, though, the focus is on ensuring that her fairy tale wedding dress lives up to its billing. Well, you can't pull it down so much because my waist. Oh, okay. oh, fix this. Fix this, remember, someone. Um, diamonds are falling off everywhere. So it's busted in the front, I can feed it when I breed. This is not going in any tighter. I need glue. You don't know Girls, would someone at least marry? Yeah. Stop dilly dallying around the room and help me. What do you want? Hold this. That's what I want you to do because the skirt's falling off me. Look, don't bend it too much now. I need to pull it up, it's falling down. The zip is coming down. That's, That's what it is. <laughs> the problems with the dress are eventually fixed. But getting the bride into her dress has been arduous. And with a long day ahead, sustenance is soon called for. After months spent preparing for this moment, it's now finally time for Luli to depart for the church. Push me out. The 
open-top vintage car is playing havoc with the girl's look. Oh, my eyelashes! <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, we're sorry. <laughs> but Lully gets to the church in one piece and in time for her wedding. Lully's father passed away seven years ago, and she will be walked down the aisle by his brother, her uncle Mike. Can we go in now? Boys. Lully and Martin, I ask you, are you ready, freely and without reservation, to give yourselves to each other in marriage? I am. I am. I am. Are you ready to love and honour each other as man and wife? I am. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. With the ceremony over, the wedding celebrations can now begin. And after all the controversy with the bride's dress, the guests seem impressed by her appearance. Yeah, she looked lovely. She really did look lovely. Best of the world ever. She looked very lovely. Like a gypsy princess. At an Irish traveller wedding, the most important dance takes place between the bride and her father. On this occasion, the honour has been bestowed on Lily's uncle, and she has chosen one of her father's favourite songs. It's, it's hard, it hurts. And obviously it was hard for that, that song was played in my father's funeral now. So that's why it was so emotional for all the daughters. That's an emotional now, we won't go there now. Yes, her father would be very proud if he was here today. Her father's looking down from heaven at her. I'm just gonna have a good old drink for me that day. Seems you know here, I have to and me. follow his steps and all. as well. <laughs> just one for you, daddy. Lully's father was born in Ireland, but although her generation might never have set foot in the country, they retain a strong connection to the homeland. How proud are you to be from Ireland? Not I'm from not Ireland. from Ireland, I'm from England. My mummy and daddy's from Ireland, but I'm still very, very proud. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'd rather be anything else than an Irish traveller. You don't have to be born in Ireland to be an Irish traveller. Day. Getting married. <laughs> Everything turned out right. Everyone looks lovely. <laughs> Go away. Father eaters.